fact that we are not comprised of a mind and a body, with the mind being the most, the far, most far superior to the body, and the only value of the body was just to keep the mind working. that there is absolutely no separation between our embodied nature and our affective or our cognitive nature. We are all of a piece. And in fact, nowadays, it is the, um, the, the nature of our, our human condition, our embodied nature, which actually is very important in stimulating and enriching and creating our cognitive perceptions and abilities. So in actual fact, to some sense, the mind relies on the potential of the body to uh, develop concepts, etc., etc. So, the argument nowadays, and the, the theory is called the um, essentially embodied existence, and there's also enactivism and a whole range of theories. And there's a very, very strong view, both in philosophy, cognitive psychology, um, neuro, neuropsychologists, that we are a whole. Um, I trained as a physical education teacher. And then I taught in a school where I was teaching children from five right up to 16. And um, I did a tremendous amount of dance in this teaching. And so after school, the next job I had was in a college for training teachers in, in Cambridge, a teacher training college. And um, while I was there, I was lucky to have an extraordinarily rich research context where everybody was questioning and answer, and, and talking and sharing and, and uh, everybody was respected for their own expertise and I was um, encouraged by the question to look at philosophy. So while I was in my first job at Homerton um, I, I studied um, philosophy. I then moved to a physical education college where all the students were being taught how to teach physical education. So here was I, interested in philosophy um, and also working, teaching, helping people to learn to teach PE and going into schools, etc. And all through this period, in school and in college, um, and again in school and college, um, I seem to be fighting my corner of trying to justify physical activity as important um, because it tends to be a non-academic subject which wasn't important. But I believe that um, capitalising on our body potential is enormously important. And I was very concerned as I went round schools um, and looked at what was happening in the world that in school there was a lot of interest in the more able, a feeling that one of the main jobs of the PE teacher was talent identification, which is one of their jobs. And looking around, I was very disturbed at um, how few people took part in physical activity throughout their life, um, very few. Um, and hence there was a growth in obesity, there was a growth in possibly mental illness, mental stress, which I would interpret as a lack of balance in their, in their life. Um, and there were medical problems, etc. So it seemed to me um, that there was enormous value in physical activity in a whole range of ways. But I had to find a sound um, basis on which to, which to argue that capitalising on our physical aspect was important. I came across three particular aspects of philosophy. Existentialists say that we are who we are on account of the interaction we've had with other people. So that existence precedes essence. We exist and then our being and our nature um, is, is created through our interaction with people, with things, with challenges, etc. 
So if you follow that through, any aspect of our human nature which affords us interaction, which feeds the self, must be important, must be, um, enable us to have a, a really rich realisation of ourself. And our embodied nature is significantly important in developing interaction. And what the phenomenologists say is that um, our perception is the perception of an embodied being. So we see the world from the position of our embodiment. And so it significantly influences perception and how we interpret and understand the world. Now that was a whistle stop tour through. So um, here was I very concerned about the lack of respect for physical activity um, in school and throughout life. think now this is my passion this is my belief how am I going to reach people what am I going to do with this this the the justification for my passion and I had done a lot of reading and the idea about physical literacy over the past 80 years had been mentioned a number of occasions but never taken up never um, looked at in depth never developed never having any sound um, justification for it so I decided that physical literacy was a very good term for me to use because it's talking about our embodied nature and my definition of literacy is interaction. It's interaction where the, the embodiment plays a significant part in the experience. So for literacy, don't think about reading or writing and I've been helped enormously in this because nowadays you can have historical literacy and music literacy and civic literacy. Um, you can have emotional literacy. And a lot of people are realizing that this interaction is important. I don't know whether they've done the philosophy that I've done, but anyway, it has been, it has been quite helpful. So that was my motivation um, from my experience, from my study, and then from my, my, my confidence and commitment that I had something worthwhile to say, so develop the concept that the purpose, the purpose is to value and take responsibility for choosing physical activity for life, for maintaining physical activity for life. practitioners relate to participants. They have to make decisions about what they teach or what they introduce or uh, what activities you do. They have to consider how they are engaging the participant, the nature of the learning challenges. They have to be very honest and perceptive about the whole ambiance of the lesson and where they use any system of making judgments on people. If one of the key elements of physical literacy is motivation, a motivational tool, there's no comparison. You're not going to fail because you're better than somebody or you're worse than somebody. So there's no comparison. You're on your own passage and hopefully with proper guidance you could make progress all the time. So it's a win-win situation. So there's no comparison. There's no level which everybody should have got to by the age of 7, 11, 12, 25 or 70. Because that's irrelevant. 
we're all very different with different experiences and different capacities. They develop their self-esteem, self their realisation, their self-confidence. And if you, if you feel that you've been enriched by an experience, you come back for more. I don't know, I want it again, you know, that was good, that was good. She recognised I was working hard. So um, that's the sort of atmosphere, I want a can-do atmosphere. We have to be quite clear if you're going to work for the aspiration of physical literacy, but you're going for the long term, you're looking at the holistic person and you're looking at the effect of what you teach, how you teach, by the chemistry, by the relationship you have and how you, how you assess. And as far as possible, make that meaningful, so they value it, they want to come back for more.